Hello, Tuesday, and more depressing news. Let's get on with it. The world's resources by country. This is one of these mega internet site interactive graphic things, and it's wondrous in its own way that um, something like that can be done. The, the thing on the left, the blob, uh, is a magnifying glass and you can take it all over the world chart there to see uh, all about the world's resources. It's a monster chart. All very interesting. Um, I got this as the most interesting part about it because as I say it's about the world's resources. Real oil and that sort of stuff. Uh, what else is in there? Soya beans, water, uranium, wheat, things like that resources and you get a little blob and then a line comes out and then they link it all up and you can read it it's all very nice but this central chart that i've magnified into obviously europe there are no blobs for lines to come out of and i think this could be crucially important uh, obviously in the bottom right there the little black blobs are oil but you can see that's not really Europe. There are no blobs in Europe. There are no blobs of commodities important enough to get themselves on this mega chart. Nothing. Nothing at all. Moving to Project Syndicate and Nouriel Rabini. Now, I've started tweeting, twittering, and one of the people I'm following, if you want to follow, follow me on Twitter, it's over the peak, just at over the peak. Look for it, you'll find it. Neil Rabini was one of the people I've followed, and he just doesn't stop. I might stop because he's just filling up my Twitter box with all his Twittering. Anyway, is capitalism doomed? Where we get from his article. Until a last year, policy makers could always uh, produce a new rabbit from their hat uh, to reflate asset prices and trigger economic recovery. Fiscal stimulus, near zero interest rates, uh, two rounds of quantitative easing, uh, ring fencing of uh, bad debt, uh, and trillions of dollars in bailout and uh, liquidity provision for banks and financial institutions. Officials tried them all. Now they have run out of rabbits. Fiscal policy currently is a drag on economic growth. Fiscal policy is currently a drag on economic growth. In other words, fiscal, meaning governments. The governments aren't spending as much. So that the that the, they would have spent isn't being spent. And so that's a drag because it's a minus from a projection of where it would have been. In both the Eurozone and the UK. Uh, the, in the US, a state and a local government, uh, now uh, the federal government, uh, are cutting expenditure and uh, reducing uh, transfer payments. Uh, soon enough, they will be raising uh, taxes. Uh, I wouldn't be too sure of that, Neural. I don't think they'll be raising taxes ever again. This is the end. I've had a real revelation putting this uh, presentation together. We're doomed, <laughs> totally doomed. Another round of a banker bailout is a politically unacceptable and economically unfeasible. Um, I think they're just going to have to do it. What, what choice do they do? Let's let the banking system collapse. Most of governments, especially in Europe, are uh, so distressed uh, that bailouts are unaffordable. They might be unaffordable, but you've just got to get the central bank to afford it with funny money. Indeed, uh, their sovereign uh, risk is actually fueling concern about the health of uh, Europe's banks, uh, which holds most of the increasingly uh, shaky government paper. Well, that's what we had yesterday in that long one about the EU. You've got to bank back the sovereigns and you've got to back the banks or the whole thing falls apart. And backing the banks is the big bit. Backing the sovereigns is relatively small, so the central banks have got to concentrate on that, as well as bank backing the banks. <gasps> oh dear, oh dear. OK, at the end we get, over time, uh, advanced economies will uh, need to invest in a human capital. Now, he's trying to put a good spin on this, but 
for all this last paragraph, basically we can say this all should have been done 30 years ago. Eh, too late. Invest in a human capital, uh, skills and uh, social safety net to increase uh, productivity and enable workers to compete. Uh, be flexible and thrive in a globalised economy. The alternative is, like the 1930s, unending stagnation, depression, currency and trade wars, capital controls, a financial crisis, sovereign insolvencies and a massive a social and a political instability. Yeah, sounds about right, Nuriel. Martin Armstrong, out of jail now. Uh, he's put this wonderful graphic together, the rise and fall of the euro, and there's different ways of following Martin Armstrong's work. If you follow the link, that's the way I do it. Copyright, Martin Armstrong, former chairman of Princeton Economic International Limited, former jailbird. The rise and fall of the euro is a sad story. However, it is a lesson that we should never forget. There won't be any future to be remembering this, Martin. <sighs> the greatest danger is allowing politicians to make decisions in areas that they are not qualified to decide. Bad writing, but we get the idea. Politicians put the euro together against the best advice of economists. Sometimes economists get it right on this occasion. This was one of the occasions that the economists got it right and politicians, as per bloody normal, got it wrong. Euro destined to fail. Still Martin Armstrong, we look at the structure of the euro. It becomes clear that the design was flawed from the outset because of a failure to understand what money really is. The driving force was trying to beat the USA and regain former glories, and I think Martin's put his finger right on it. It was an ego trip by the euro politicians dangerous to play such a huge game. Move on to credit write-downs. Talking out of the United States, um, a run on Eurozone banks, question mark. The Calafia Beach Pundit raises an interesting question in relation to the recent surge in the US money supply, which he suggests might be a reflection of a scramble for US dollar assets. More specifically, the argument would seem to be that a silent run on European banks is in the works as money is moved into perceived safe US dollar liquid assets. Treasuries. <laughs> as this chart, etc. So let's move on to Califia, what's his face, and have this chart from him in the link, uh, five, and it, this is the rise in the M2 money supply. Now, don't get too excited about inflation is going to come from that. There's a much more important story to be had. And we lead, read at the end of his article, given the lags between the real time and when the data hit M2, it's quite likely that Europeans have already have been shifting substantially more than half a billion into US banks in the past two months. I suspect we haven't seen the end of this story either. As in Europe, the European people are moving money from Greek, Portuguese, Irish, Italian, Spanish banks into the core, into France and Germany, Holland, etc. Also from the euro as a, a, a whole, money is going out of the euro. There is a run on eurozone banks within the euro and out of the eurozone, it seems. Mish, is Germany's commerce bank in need of another bailout? Now, I've put this in just really to say um, it's the blogosphere, obviously, that's where I get most of my stuff from, but all this talk of euro stuff and euro bank problems, euro country problems, Confidence, confidence, confidence. It can't be doing anybody any good. And it's also a segue into Germany. Why Germany light, might let the Europe fail. Fall. Same thing. Fall, fail. This is uh, Farid Zakaria writing for CNN. He writes some good stuff. 
This is the moment of truth for Europe, and I believe it is too, Farid. For the last year or so, the Europeans have repeatedly produced workable compromises that kicked the can forward. They hoped that compromises would quiet the markets. This strategy was often quite successful. Uh. Europeans kept promising, yes, we are going to bail out the weaker countries with the greatest debt load, but we want some structural reforms in return, and we get more structural reforms, we'll bail them out more, and if the crisis seems more intense, we'll bail them out again, etc., etc. The Europeans repeatedly produced packages. Good alliteration. The Europeans repeatedly produced packages that were enough to satisfy the markets. Their hope was that at some point concerns would dampen down, and then, in the quiet of the night, they could allow countries like Greece to soft default a restructuring that doesn't spook anyone and doesn't become a Lehman Brothers-like event they sought, a quiet reshuffling of debt. I think this soft landing has now become impossible. It has, there's too much shit flying about. And why Germany might let Europe fall from, I, I did a comment reply to Sned, I think, last night. The last Merkel-Sarkozy meeting when they said nine to euro bonds, you had the option, you had euro bonds, which is kind of a middle of the road idea. Otherwise, the bailing out of Greece, it, it, Ireland, Portugal, rebailing out Greece, buying Italian bonds, buying Spanish bonds has to be done with some form of money. It could have been done with euro bonds, the middle, um, the middle way, but that's been taken off the table. Now it must be done either with taxpayers' money, uh, the EFSF, all the countries contributing, and imagine the political problems that that will cause, or the ECB does it with printed money and it comes down to the fact the ECB will be asked do you want to be the European Central Bank for the Eurozone or do you want the Eurozone to go away and therefore you go away and it's going to be the Eurozone Euro, uh, European Central Bank prints or the Euro goes away Telegraph, more UK this, banks should take more risk, argues Bank of England Executive Director. Desperate, isn't it? Banks should take more risks. Banks should be allowed to take more risk and underpin the recovery. <clears throat> In spite of the lasting damage caused by the financial crisis and lead, a leading regulator has suggested now, I would normally say this is just madness or just desperate. It is just desperate. But the um, leading reg regulator is Adair Turner. Now, if you follow this link, number nine, the future of finance, the LEC, LSE report, London School of Economics, and watch the videos, listen to the audio, whatever you do. Um, I've got my ears on. I've listened over and over and over to, again to these um, presentations, and they are fabulous. Adair's Turner's um, presentation to the London School of Economics here is fabulous. And Andy Haldane, marked under that, is good too. Um, all of it's good. Peter Boone, Martin Wolf. Martin Wolf had an impossible um, thing to talk on, but he did the best he did. Smithers and Large, John, absolutely um, wonderful listening, watching, whatever you choose. But Adair Turner knows what he's talking about so when he says that banks should lend more he knows how desperate that is edmund conway in the telegraph it may look as grim as the years after 1945 but there are glimmers of hope he writes this article i've read the article i couldn't find the glimmers of hope it was seemingly just in the headline but i wanted to put that up just to see those children playing in the um early 50s whenever it was you know, little girls playing with big bricks. Oop, made my ears come on. Right, later in this article, though, we get from Edward Conway, the same thing happened with German and French debt. We're talking about uh, the um, price interest rate on sovereign debt. The fact 
is that apart from a few exceptions, Greece et al., government bond yields are not at present a yardstick for solvency. The Treasury boy in the UK said, look, all our bonds are going, we can sell them so cheap. That means everyone's so confident in what the government is doing is right and wonderful and no worries. Bollocks. It is not at present a yardstick of solvency. It, instead, they are delivering the same message as Japanese bonds did before that country embarked on its first lost decade. Bond yields are rock bottom because markets fear that the developed world is on the brink of an extended period of zero growth. The problem was laid out in a speech by the Bank of England's Executive Director for Financial Stability, Andy Haldane, linked in the LSE um, presentations, last week. Whichever way you look at it, Britain is enormously over-leveraged, and although we are gradually paying off debt, its scale is so great that the experience will be a long and drawn-out one understatement. Market released on uh, today, Household Finances Index for the United Kingdom. Household finances worsen at the fastest pace since the survey began. Little Pac-Man is coming up through the, the, the range of um, wealth people. The poor people at the bottom are being eaten away and it's coming up into the middle classes it's just going to eat its way right up through society i'll just uh one comment well i think i tweeted yesterday i tweeted uh something to the effect that the only way out of this debt is obviously pay it off default on it or inflate it away but pay it off or default on it but the people that hold the debt the um, creditors have political clout they have the balls of the political people and will get the political people to get the people to pay their debts and as long as that goes on which could be decades zero growth is optimistic have a good day au revoir